Hello guys, and here's another uh, video tutorial for Fusion 360. Um, so, uh, if you haven't seen it already, you might want to watch our Tutorials Basics, um, which you can find here on my YouTube channel. That will give you a good introduction to sketches and the basic navigation of Fusion 360. For those of you who are already familiar with that, let's crack on. So, uh, I've started up a new project here, and you can find the link um, in the YouTube description of the video below. So you can open up this project and download it yourself. And we are going to be looking at some more of the primitives um, that we can make here. So they're not called primitives here in Fusion 360. Uh, that's the kind of a term that's used in, say, 3D Studio or Blender. Um, but the basic, uh, um, let's say, geometric shapes that we can uh, create here are a box, a cylinder, sphere, torus, coil, and a pipe. Well, in our first tutorial, we were um, we modeled the box from a sketch, but obviously this would be a quicker way of doing it. it would just be to select box from here, and we'll choose a, a plane that we want to work in. So we'll we'll go top down, and it's basically going to work in the same way as our sketch, but we don't have to go through that procedure of drawing a sketch and extruding it. So we can go 35 and 35. That'll make a 35 millimeter box and our height, it will automatically go to the extrusion, um, and there we go. So we've created our box that's a lot quicker than drawing an individual sketch like we did before. Now there's other um, objects that we can create here, so let's make a cylinder. Now again, you can choose which surface plane you want to work on. So if we choose our top surface plane here, and um, we go to a top-down view, now what you'll see is uh, we want to find the center point, so we go to the center of each side and it will snap to the middle there. And we can again draw a 34 millimeter um, circle and we can choose how far we want to extrude that. So you can see if you followed along with tutorial 1, we are basically making the same shape but it's a lot quicker than having to draw sketches and um, extrude them. So we can create shapes like this and uh, maybe we want to um, uh, make multiple shapes like this and make it into some kind of uh, Lego brick, for example. Um, so we might want to now copy this um, shape and join them together. So here's our bodies here. And if we go to copy and uh, paste, and then we move this 35 millimeters to the side, we now have the two um, pieces like so. And let's do that again. So we'll go copy and paste. We'll drag this out again, 35. Uh, now a quicker way of copy and paste is to actually just select the object, go to move and create a copy. And now it will copy that object like so. Um, so we'll do that again, and we, we'll do that twice more, so we can get six of these objects to make a kind of Lego brick looking shape. Um, sorry, I forgot to choose create a copy, move, create a copy. Uh, now you can also type in the coordinates, but we know that our, our, our shape is 35, so um, we got minus 35 because we're moving in the opposite direction, there we go. Okay, so now we have our Lego brick kind of shape. Um, now we need to make a recess in the bottom, so these uh, could be stacked. So um, this time we'll go to create a scratch and we'll choose the bottom there. And we'll create a circle. Uh, in the center of here, and this will be 35 millimeters, uh, 34 millimeters also. And now we go to finish sketch, extrude, and we'll go minus 10, and it will cut a little hole in the bottom there, so that um, our blocks can can interlock. Now, if we do that to the other shapes as well, of course, it would have been quicker if I did it before copying the objects. We get the center point here also. And the same here. Uh, 
and down here. Two more to go. And one more. So we've done multiple sketches on different objects here. And now we can extrude them all at the same time. So uh, we've got a finished sketch. And we choose our extrude tool. And we can select multiples of these. Now, um, I'll show you a little feature here. So it's a snap to feature. So if we want the extrusion of this to be the same depth as the other one, obviously I know it was 10 millimeters. I could just input uh, minus 10, but I can also select that and you'll see it will automatically now snap to the same um, distance as this one. And again, we've got cut objects and there we go. So now we have our uh, Lego brick kind of shape here. Final thing is I want to join all of these up. So we can go combine and we go to join and we select all of these objects. Um, so we can join them all together and we can choose to keep tools or not. Um, I'm not going to keep the tools and I'm going to choose a new component and we go to OK. So what that has done now is it's joined all of those objects together uh, into one new component. So we have our original body here, which we used um, to create and then copy. Um, so it's retained that, but now we have this new component, um, which is the combination of all of those joined together. Um, now we can copy this component and we can move it so you can see now our Lego bricks will um, you know, interlock here. Um, we want to align this. So here's a little tip for the move tool. If you want to align something up, um, we know that these, uh, this upper corner here and this lower corner there should be touching. So we can change our move type from free move to um, point to point. So our origin point will be here and our target point will be there and it will now we go to capture position align those up perfectly for us and there's our Lego bricks here um, now as we've turned it into a component um, you'll notice something interesting if we go to uh, material here and we apply it to there um, we can apply it to here um, our original component Whatever we do to it, it will apply it to the other one. You see? Um, because when we change it into a component, these two things are now tied together. It's a copy of a component. Um, that's one of the differences between components and bodies. So now whatever we do to one of these will also happen to the other because they are intertwined. Um, so if you create a component in Fusion, 360, that component then becomes something that's reused throughout the model. And whatever you do to one, it will do to the other. So um, here's an example. Uh, if we were to go to the fillet tool again, and let's select all of these edges here, we'll fillet these by about a millimeter. You'll see it now gets applied also to the other object. So as soon as you make something into a component, um, it's treated differently to when it was only a body. Um, now the component is copied multiple times and whatever you change uh, the component once, it will change it in other locations as well. So there's um, a brief introduction to components and uh, how to combine objects together um, here in Fusion 360. So if you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, and uh, down in the comments, um, uh, your description of the video below, you can find a link to this uh, Fusion 360 um, file. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.